Hello, I'm meteorologist Jeff Matthews, and welcome to my favorite module, How Do I Predict the Weather? This is my favorite module because we had to go through all the other modules to get to the point where a meteorologist can predict the weather. This is how I know how to predict what I do predict. Also, as a side note, have you noticed by now that I've introduced myself as I'm meteorologist Jeff Matthews? That's important for you to know. It's a title where you earn a degree from a university in atmospheric and oceanic sciences where you learn all of these processes to get to this point. So that's why I introduce myself the way that I do. Now about how I do my job. If I'm on TV, generally we receive between two and four minutes to give you the weather report. It depends upon things like what other news is happening and how important is the other news as to how much time we wind up getting to be able to give you your weather report. When I come in, I begin by looking at what's going on right now. And some tools that help me do this are as follows. This is a map of New York State, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania with Canada and one of the Great Lakes, the one closest to us, Lake Ontario, in between. On this map, these dots represent observation stations. Little stations that have thermometers and humidity gear and wind anemometers and people telling us whether it's cloudy or sunny, whether there's precipitation going on at each one of these dots. So I can see by looking at this chart what kind of weather is going on specifically at all these locations before I get started making a forecast. Another wise thing to look at might be the radar loop because the radar tells us a great deal of information about what's going on across the country at the present time. For instance, do you see that there's rain going on? Also, I can tell how intense it is by the color code up here, whether it's light green, dark green, yellow, orange, or red. So I can now know it's raining, it's raining light or moderately or heavy. I can also see what direction the, move, the rain is moving in. There's still more. I can tell whether it's rain or snow. Because on the code key where it turns blue, that tells me that this little area right up here in Canada is actually snow that's falling. So there's a great deal of information I can gather by looking at the observations across the three states and the radar loop and the satellite loop as well. This shows me the picture from space of where the clouds are, how thick they are, what type of cloud they might wind up being, whether they are increasing in coverage or decreasing in size, and what direction they're moving in as well. It also gives me a ballpark view to figure out where are fronts and storms and high-pressure anti-cyclones that bring fair weather. So it gives me a quick picture as to what's going on in our atmosphere the last several hours. And then comes maybe the most interesting part of how I wind up predicting the weather, it's the computer models or simulations of the atmosphere. So in this particular image, this is the country that you and I live in. And it has all these lines showing me the direction of movement of the air and the intensity of that movement based on whether the lines are close together here or far apart here. And it's color coded. So I can also get information based on the colors that show up as well, that give the meteorologist information to be able to figure out whether a storm is here, if it's intensifying or if it's weakening, how quickly it might be moving based on how tight the lines are, or whether there's a high pressure area here, how intense it is, and what direction and how fast is it moving in. Plus, it'll help me know whether the storm came out of Canada, so it might bring colder air, whether the anticyclone is coming out of the plains of the United States, and so it may bring us warmer and dry air when it finally arrives as well. And just like computer games you may play at home, these simulations can be seen three-dimensionally. We're looking through the atmosphere now. In other words, you're standing at the edge, looking through it edge on, so you can see the ground, whether it's water or land, all the way up to the top of the atmosphere where the storms might be located as well to determine things like how intense is the storm, is it shallow, is it deep, how intense is the high pressure area, and things like rain versus snow, 
What is the temperature doing from the ground to the top? Is it going down uniformly from, say, 50 to 40 to 30 to 20 to 10? Or is it dropping from 50 to 30 and then climbing back up to 50 degrees and then falling off again? What is the temperature doing at different elevations? That helps me to determine if it's going to be all rain, rain changing to snow, snow changing to rain and sleet, all the different possibilities that could happen for your forecast. And then, of course, I know from studying the weather what direction storms, based on where they're located, tend to move. Most of them tend to move from west to east. And when they start, they tend to move from northwest to southeast. But there are patterns that come out. Remember I explained to you in a previous module how if you were in a car or if you were looking for traffic, you wouldn't look for traffic in a cornfield or over the ocean because that's not where cars go. The same thing for storms. When you see enough storms, they develop patterns. So if a storm forms in the western Gulf of Mexico, it tends to move up the Appalachians and into the northeast. If a storm comes out of western Canada, it tends to move across the top part of the United States into New England. So those are ways we can know where storms are located and where they might head. And the same can be said of their counterparts, anticyclones or high pressure systems that bring fair weather. You ready for your quiz? Here we go. Question one. How much time do we meteorologists get on TV to present a forecast? Question two. What do I use to make a forecast? And question three. What makes a good forecast? And that last question is something you need to think about. What makes a forecast a good forecast? I'll be right back with the answers. Here we go. Question one. How much time do we get to present the weather on TV? About two to four minutes. It depends on what other news is going on that may be very important on a given newscast, but generally between two and four minutes. What do I use to make a forecast? Well, I showed you how the observation sites give us the current conditions throughout the state and throughout the country. I look at satellite pictures, radar images, and computer model simulations, as well as my own expertise and knowledge in knowing where storms and high pressure systems form and where they tend to move based on where they formed. What makes a forecast good? Think about this from your own perspective. When you're listening to a weather forecast, let's say you're a student, and you might want to have recess tomorrow. You'd like it to be good weather, and you'd like the weather forecast to be accurate. If you'd like a snow day, you'd like snow, and you'd like the forecaster to be accurate. So let's have a look. The number one thing that makes a forecast good is if it's accurate. If the forecaster is wrong all the time, that forecast is worthless to you. How about if it's timely? What if I told you it was going to snow tomorrow, but I told you the forecast it was going to snow tomorrow in two days? Now it's a day late, so it doesn't matter to you if it snowed yesterday. That's not a good forecast. So I have to be timely and tell you with enough time in advance of what's going to happen, what's going to happen accurately. And then, if I'm easy to understand, that makes a forecast good too. If you can't understand what I'm saying because I'm jumbling my words or I'm slurring or I'm talking too fast, you're not going to understand it. You're not going to benefit from it being on time and being accurate. So I have to be able to speak clearly and slowly and use words that you can understand that make a forecast timely and accurate. So there you go. That's how do I predict the weather. I hope you enjoyed it and learned. Thanks so much for watching.